Hello family, welcome back to another video with Miss Cynthia, Unapologetically Cynthia. Thank you for stopping by on this Sunday. Today is um, Sunday, September 29th. Um, it is approximately 12, is it 12? It's 12.37. And um, I want to welcome you guys to my channel. If you are new, welcome back if you are not new. Today, I want to share something very, very, very important with you. And I feel like this video is for somebody. And if it's not for you, it's okay. Um, share it with somebody that you think that, you know, they could benefit from it. I appreciate each and every one of you for each time that you watch my videos, that you support me. I appreciate you. So without further ado, let's, let's hop right into this topic. But first, wait a minute. Let me ask you, how are you today? How are you doing? Um, I, I, I want to always be considerate and ask how you're doing um, because I know sometimes we, we, we struggle with things um, and having sometimes having a good day can be one of them, you know, but I hope that you are doing well and just know that you are always in my prayers. And when I say always, always, because this platform is all about God, it's all about God and what I say, I mean, and when I say I always pray for you, I do. That is that is my purpose, you know. So um, comes purpose, come dedication, right? So the topic of this video is you will never be in the image of someone else because that image is already taken. You have to begin to be you if you not have if you have not already started. And if you see me looking over because I'm going to grab my computer in a minute, um, I didn't want to miss any of the nuggets that were dropping in my spirit this morning. And, and, and so I had to grab my computer. I had to start jotting down notes. I had to I didn't want to lose anything. So if you see me looking over, that's what I'm doing. But again, you can't be somebody else. You can only be you. You're taken because you're you and they're taken because they're, you know, they're who they are. So, and this morning I was reading from, um, the book, the book of Jose and, um, chapter seven. So my goal was to read chapter six through 10 because that was, um, the layout for the day. But when I got to chapter seven, I couldn't let it go. I had to stop right there. I said, now this is something that I'm supposed to share. And so I began to meditate on it and get what I got out of it. And this is so powerful. And I hope that you receive this message. And again, like I said, if it's not for you, it's okay. Um, some things won't hit us in that, in that moment. And yeah, and it's okay. Um, so let me read to you what Jose chapter 7 says. And then if you'll stay further towards the end, I have something good for you. This is good, but everything is good in the video. So stay tuned. Y'all know I got to put on my glasses. But stay focused and hit me out. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Hosea chapter 7. When I would have healed Israel. When I would have healed Israel. Then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. And the wickedness of Samaria. For they commit falsehood. And the thief cometh in. And the troop of robbers spoil it without. And they consider not in their hearts. That I remember all of their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They can make the king glad with their wickedness. And the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers. As an oven heated by the baker. Who ceaseth from raising after he hath kneaded the dough. Until it was leavened. In the day of our king the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hands with scorners. For they have made ready their heart like an oven. While they lay in wait, their baker sleepeth all the night. 
in the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. They are hot. They are all hot as an oven and have, and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Mm. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he and he doesn't even know. Gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he he, he doesn't know. He still doesn't know. And the pride of Israel testify to his face, and they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Ephraim also is, a, is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. When they do, they shall go. I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. Woe to them. For they have fled from me, destruction unto them, because they have transgressed. <clears throat> I'm sorry. They have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. And they have not cried unto me with their heart. When they howled upon their beds, they assembled themselves for corn and wine, and they rebel against me. Though I have bound and strengthened, though I have bound and strengthened their arms. And yet do they imagine themselves in mischief again against me. They return, but not the most high, but not to the most high. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. I thought that was very, very, very interesting and also very informative. And so with that being said, this is this is what I gathered and this is what I took away from this. So the next the next words that you'll hear will be my words. Like I said, I had so much stuff coming at me at one time. I didn't I couldn't stop. And um, so here goes. In this chapter of Hosea, the people are just basically doing what they want to do, following the wrong people and just all over the place. There are so many takeaways from this chapter for one being lack of knowledge for lack of knowledge we will suffer there are times when you can associate yourself with others and they will lead you down a path of pure destruction and absolutely don't care one thing about you or your life it's like the blind leading the blind because there is no way a leader is going to purposefully lead anyone down the wrong path never that's that doesn't happen and when you are not aware of what is going on You'll be fooled. You'll be deceived many times. When you invest your time and energy in the wrong people or person, it's a disaster waiting to happen. When a person shows you who they are the first time, you believe them. You don't have to wait a second time for somebody to show you who they truly are. You're waiting for maybe the same thing to happen or something different to happen. But it's the same person. Um, let me find where I was. It is who they are. This is when you want to sharpen your skills and learn things for yourself. There will be signs of a person um, leading you down the right path. And there are others out there who simply does not know that they're being led astray. It may sound very crazy, but it's true. Sometimes people conform to people who show them care and we, we, we know that sometimes it's not the best care. It's not the right care, you know. And so we have to understand that. No, not everybody knows that. Sometimes a person feels loved when somebody cares about them or when they think somebody cares about them. It's just like being in a game. This is who we, we click with every day. This is who we see. We have, a, we have a leader that we follow, you know, that type of thing. Let me find my spot. They follow and believe what they are taught, like a child being raised by a mother or father or both. What is taught will show up unless a person is truly equipped as they go. They will believe what they think is right because this is how they were raised. For lack of knowledge, 
again, we suffer. Growing up as a child, God allowed me to see so many scenes and situations to truly learn from that. I had no other choice but to learn at an early age. I would always be like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? That doesn't seem right. They're not treating the person right, you know? I have always been observant and now I know at the age of 50 why. So when I tell you that God created us just how he wants us, he does. That's why I don't allow anyone or society to tell me who I am or who I should be because I have already learned who I am and who's I who I belong to. This is not a conceited mentality, but a real mentality. I'm not conceited at all, though others may feel that way. Sometimes when, when you're honest with people and you're very strong about what you say because you've experienced, you've seen, God has shown you things. Sometimes they take that as being conceited versus taking it as being a tool or being a nugget or um, some information that they may need. Okay, take me out of the equation. Um, God uses me as a mouthpiece. It's not about me. It's not about what I say. It's about God. Because like I said, he's allowed me to see these things. I've experienced what I, everything that I tell you, I've experienced it. That's just like, um, you know, sometimes, you know, different universities or different colleges offer classes. Um, say for instance, um, drug addiction classes. How can I teach you anything about being addicted to drugs? And I don't, I, I, I don't do drugs, but I, but I have siblings that have been addicted to drugs. I know what it looks like. I know what it smells like. I just don't know what it feels like as far as the physical, the physical side of it. So even that I know a lot about, but I don't know anything about doing drugs. So if I didn't have these experiences, I couldn't tell you any of this. If I don't read my Bible, I can't tell you any of the things that I'm that I'm sharing with you at all. And at any time that I post anything and I'm talking about God and I'm relaying information, go to somebody you trust, share this video with them and, and allow them to give you some um, feedback on it. Somebody that you trust. But yeah, I'm, I'm never going to I'm never going to come here and. I'm deceive anyone. Let me let me say this too before I finish reading my my passage. I am not um, I am not going to dwell on how many subscribers I have. I'm not going to dwell on how many likes I have. I'm not going to put myself in a position to not do God's work. Or do his will because I'm distracted by the likes and the views and the subscribers. I'm not doing that because that's an easy distraction from the enemy. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to be distracted. And I'm not doing that. What I'm, God has given me kingdom keys. And I'm going to use those keys just for what he wants me to use them for. And baby, let me tell you. If I come here and there's only one person watching these videos. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I do. I'm doing what I need to do. So, um, I don't. I don't come here for likes. I want us to build as a community. No doubt about that. Because I, I study the word. I read the word. I'm, I've, I've I've lived a life of experiences that I know that they're for you. They were never for me, even though they hurt. They were never for me. So again. Um, when I come here to, to spread what I feel like is love, because God is love. It's, it's genuine. It has nothing to do with being conceited. And you might get called, call me OCD sometimes um, because I do have OCD tendencies. But no, don't. I'm not conceited. I grew these faith muscles. I grew these muscles of trust. It was, it was God who did all of this for me. And this is why I I go so hard sometimes. Even when I speak sometimes, sometimes I, my, my, my voice can get elevated because I have passion for God and his people. I, I just do. It's, it's natural. Nobody had to teach me how to 
speak or how to live the life that I live. That was my life. I lived it. So I can, I'm the only one who can tell about my life. I was talking with my daughter last night and I let her read um, a short story that I wrote when I was in a coffee shop. And, you know, the kids were gone. So we had a chance to conversate, you know. I asked her, I said, what did you think about my short story? She said it was good. She said, you need to do something with it. And, you know, it's something that I already know, but it's happening as we speak. I told her, sometimes people think they know you, but if you truly know me, you know that I'm a writer. If you truly know me, you, you know that I love to write. You know that I love to read. You know my favorite color. You know those intricate details about me, if you know me, you know? So I just wanted to put that out there. People think they know you, but they don't. So if you'll allow me to continue um, reading, I hope I didn't get off track, but you know, it goes hand in hand. Um, I've always been observant. And now at the age of 50, I know, I know why. So when I tell you that, um, this is not a conceited mentality, but a, but a real mentality. I'm just grateful if a word is used to describe anything about me. It is grateful. I too could have been laid down the wrong path. If I went down a path and it was wrong, um, guess who took me there? If I went down a path and it was wrong, guess who took me there? None other than myself. I, I took me down the wrong path. So I can't blame that on anybody. It's called taking accountability. And I can't, just like I won't come here and lie to you, I ain't gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie to myself. I'm not gonna lie to myself. I just accept it, keep on moving and learn from it. Just because I did things in, a, in certain situations that felt good and felt right does not mean they were right, especially when I knew better. What I'm truly sharing in this message is that you learn for yourself, you learn things for yourself. And look, it does not take away one thing. It does not take one day to do these things. It happens as time progresses, One day at a time. Just start working on it. For one, you will not only learn um, things for yourself. You will learn who you are as a person. When you learn who you are as a person, that is your power. And once you gain your power, baby, God will put you in position, position. But you got you, you have to you have to get to know you first. Um, you're not just a spot in the world for people to claim you to do whatever they want to do with you. You claim yourself and live life more um, knowledgeable. Choose you. And if there is anyone watching this video, when you see and acknowledge a person hated for destruction or simply has no family support or have just a uh, just have um, ha not had a good upbringing, you know, you know, if you will, we have not always had the perfect upbringing or been the perfect households. Nowhere near perfect. And I'm going to tell you my childhood. I hated my childhood. I hated it. Let me, I hated my childhood. Choose you. Plant the seed. When you plant the seed, that's all you got to do. You don't have to water the seed. You don't have to do nothing else with that seed. Just plant it. God will do the rest. He just wants us to plant them. Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes people are not going to always conform to what you say in the moment. Sometimes they will. Sometimes it takes a person to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A person has to be conditioned to do certain things, to receive certain things. And that's okay. Um, because I'm that way. We don't always want, look. We don't always want to do what God says do. You know what I'm saying? In in like, um, it's depending on what it is. You know, I rem prime example. I dated this guy, and he started dating someone else after we were done. I was done, but he wasn't done with me. 
And so she hated, she hated me. She disliked me because of that. It wasn't my fault that he, you know, he still has love for me. We were close like that and we were still close, but she didn't like me. And so, you know, we went back and forth, you know what I'm saying? And I was even dumb for going back and forth with her, but she tried to make me, um, she tried to put me in a position that I wasn't. I no longer wanted him. I didn't. But because I was living in his house, that was the thing that was eat, eating at her. So I formed this, this dislike for her because of how she kept coming at me with things about him. Why are you, why are you telling me? You got an issue with him and not me. So one day I told this story briefly in another video. Um, so I, I took my mom to the grocery store one day, just let her do what she needed to do in the grocery store and um, let her have her me time because that's what she liked. And who did I see? The girl. I was not prepared for that. And I also wasn't prepared for God to tell me to pray for her. Yeah, sometimes God, you know, God is going to present us with things that we don't want to do, but we have to do them. It's called obedience. Did I? I did. Because I didn't want to have that blood on my hands. And it, and it has, I didn't hate her. I just didn't like how she kept coming at me because of someone she was dating. No, I, I be obedient. Once you learn the importance of being obedient, it'll start to work in your favor, whether you want to do it or not. Just do it. It's for God. All right, let me find my spot. Um, if you help one person because if you help one person if you can do that it's a job well done when you see people that are lost in the world or you know somebody that is lost whether you're at work school at church at coffee shop where you live and you have like an encounter with them like <clears throat> you see them outside or you strike up a conversation or however the case may be. Give them an encouraging word. Because some things you see and you know what it is. And some things you just know. So if you can give an encouraging word, I can give an encouraging word. It's called planting a seed. And if, if everybody <clears throat> that has that knowledge can plant a seed to help our brothers and sisters. What 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 do you think that would do for God's kingdom? What do you think that would do for people? If I do it, if you do it, if they get themselves together and they start to do it, you know, because they've gone through the experience to get to where they need to be. If we all do it, that's why I say if if I can if I can lead one person to God, I have done my duty. I have done it. But I, I pray that I lead more than one. But I'm just using that as an example. So all my all my prayer warriors, all my all my knowledgeable people, all my people that have this have this discernment. Um when you see that one, teach that one, reach that one. And let it trickle. Let it, let it be like a domino effect. Don't gatekeep. Sometimes that gatekeeping is blood on your hands. When all you got to do is simply release what you know. Release what God wants you to release in that moment, in that time. Um, no, it's not always easy, like I said, because some, sometimes people don't want to. They don't really want to hear the truth. I put it like that. And it's not that they really don't want to, but they don't want to because you have you have peeped out something um, around them or in or something that's going on within them. You, you've peeped it out. So that's that's what I'm trying to say. Let me find my spot again. I'm almost done, and I'm not trying to rush because this is this is God right here. I'm not trying to rush, but I know sometimes. Um, People want to click off before they can get the end of the video. I've done it. 
But when it's something that I truly know that I need and it can help me, I go right on to the end. I don't care if it's 30 minutes. I don't care if it's an hour. I don't care if it's two hours. If I have to go back and, and catch the rest of it up, I'm going to watch it. All right, let me find my spot. Um, okay. you, you, you can't. You can only lead a person to the water, but you cannot make them drink the water. You know, for a long time, you know how you hear um, sayings, you know, when you're growing up and you really don't pay them any attention. But, you know, as you grow and which is what which is what I'm referring to when you grow and you gain that knowledge about certain things, those things will get to they'll get to making sense in your everyday life. You can lead a person to water, but you can't make them drink it. But it's in the leading that's very important. Lead them to it. Lead them to it and lead the rest up to God. Just like planting that seed. Um, don't suffer because you will continue to be led by wrongful things. Don't continue to put yourself in situations following people that you have no business following. Don't do that to yourself. Your fun may have to stop. Those things that you used to do, sometimes they have to come to a screeching halt. If you truly, truly, truly want, want to do better for yourself, if you truly want to um, finally start leading a life that you are meant to live, if you want um, God to bless you with those things that you want to be blessed with, sometimes your fun has to stop. You can't take those things with you and you definitely can't take people where you're going. You have to get to where you're going first. That's just like, um, again, the blind leading the blind. Somebody, somebody's got to lead. And you know, not everybody can lead until they get what they need. So until you get what you need, you're being a follower. <clears throat> and sometimes, no, most times when your time is up for being a follower, it has to be up. You got to let it go. Let it go so you can live purposeful. And if you think that the fun that you're having, which is not always fun, it just has become habitual. This is what has this, this is what you do all the time. Um, you hang out with people. Um, you 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 plan to do it every you already know what you're gonna do <clears throat> week to week. You know, you already know what's that, what that's gonna be because that's been the norm. Um, but you, you know, you have to, you have to be honest with yourself and cut it. You just do. You can't take those things with you. Um, I got my feet propped up here. Well, for one, I'm comfortable. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm wrapping this up. I hope that this video has been encouraging. I hope that I have said something to make you, to not to make you, but to give you something to grasp, something to gain from it. I really do. I, that, that's always my goal. That's always my purpose. <clears throat> you know, as we age, <laughs> no, I will not blame that on age. You know, as we, as we get older, because I, I was forgetful when I was young. But, you know, when I write things down and I can go back to it and read it, I want to give you everything that was in my spirit when I wrote it. I don't want to leave anything out. Even though I might get off track with the words that I read, it's still what I'm saying in this passage. I just wrote them so I wouldn't forget them. And so um, if at any time that you feel like you want to go back to the chapter and read um, what I got my message from this is from the book of Hosea chapter 7 chapter 7 um, family again don't suffer because you don't want to do the work don't suffer because you if you if you continue to be led by wrongful things you know you you will continue to live a life under somebody else you um, I already said that um, you can meet others and have a whole new outlook on life. I'm not saying that you have to forget about the people that 
you have associated with yourself, have associated yourself with or have been friends with for years. I'm talking about finding you and finding yourself. You cannot find yourself inside of another person. You can only find you when you encounter you. And this take time. It doesn't happen overnight. Practice at it. Anything you practice at is worth if and if it's worth doing, it's gonna come, it's gonna come, you're gonna you're gonna bear fruit from it. Other people are gonna bear fruit from it. Be you. Everybody else is taken, I promise you. And until you start being you, things can't happen for you. The doors, those doors that are trying to open for you, they won't open. Because you're trying to go through somebody else's door. You're trying to you're trying to go up somebody else's ladder. And and you can't you that's you can't do it and be successful at it. Um so let me let me put this down and, and wrap this video up. I heard I think it was this morning. Um, I was watching a video and they were talking about buying views and buying subscribers. That's not the first time that I heard it. But you know, I wrapped a taste on it in my mind, you know. Let me tell you something. I can take these glasses off now. I've got so I've gotten so conformed to wearing them that they they feel almost natural. You hear what I'm saying? That's just like what I've been saying, what I've been sharing this far. When you conform to something, it feels natural. It feels like your norm. Those glasses come off when I'm not reading. I don't sit and wear those all day. They're only reading glasses. So they are not a permanent thing in my life. No. Back to the, 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 the buying the lights and the views. This is why so many people are unhappy in their life <laughs> let things happen organically i'm trying to i'm trying to stay as calm as i can with this if you do things organically baby baby you will produce so much more than you think you can with the views and the subscribers and you know it it can go deeper but you don't have to buy anything to make you um, to make you get here, to make you you know go higher or go further. There are so many people with money, overflowing money enough for thirty households, but they're not happy. They're not happy. If you take your time, do the work. Put in the work, be committed to what you do, be intentional about what you do. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work in your favor. Whether you got a hundred subscribers or a thousand, whether you got five hundred or five thousand, whether you got ten k or twenty k. Sometimes that means absolutely nothing, and I had to learn that part about the subscribers myself. And God had to work that thing through me. This channel is not about me. This channel is about God. My platform is about God. So I'm not going to go around buying no views to make my channel grow. My channel is growing. My channel is growing. And I'm, I'm, I am grateful at the rate that it's going. Because at first I had to learn it. You know, I was new to it. So I had to learn it. But for the person that click on any of my videos and gain something from it, that's all that matters. God is my provider. He provides for me. He provides for me. And so with the kingdom keys that he has given me, that he has graced me with, I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them whether one or ten subscribers. I'm going to use those keys. I'm going to continue to read his word because it, it helps me help you. It helps me, you know, most of the time, most of the times get through what I'm going through. That's why I encourage anyone to build that relationship with God. 
build it, build it, build it empty, build it afraid, build it scared. Just build a relationship with him because he got you. He got you. Family, thank you so much for watching this video. I thank you so much. I appreciate you um, and I love you. And I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. Um, it's about what? It's probably about. It is 1.12 p.m. in the afternoon. And whatever you do throughout the rest of your day, do it with grace. Do it with grace. Spend some time with yourself in this day. Go sit in your car. Go sit outside on the step. Spend some quality time with yourself and God. God is wherever you want him to be. Wherever you want him to be, that's where he's going to be. Go spend some time near the water. Listen to the water. Be amazed at how big that body of water is and who allow, who allows this thing to be. Man does not allow water, bodies of water, to be the way that they are. This is God. That's God. That's God. I love you, family. I will continue to pray for you as I pray for myself. And I'm going to go in here in this kitchen and I'm going to, I'm going to start preparing my dinner. I am fasting until five o'clock. So as I fast, I got to cook. So by the time five o'clock come, <laughs> food will be ready. That was funny because yeah, I'm fasting and imagine cooking something. Some of your favorite things that you got to wait until five o'clock to eat it. And it's okay. It's okay. I need to talk to God. I need to I need I need to pray some more throughout this day. I need to hear from him more. I'm starving. I'm starving this here so I can receive what God wants me to receive. And and you know, um that too is what fasting is about. Praying and spending time with God so you can hear from God. And and get what you need. Get what you need. And when he see you intentionally trying, he going to show up for you every time. He show up for us when, you, when we don't do it. So imagine when you start investing your time with him. I love you, family. And I will see you in the next video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have not already done it. Go ahead. And if you have not Subscribe. What are you waiting for? Turn on your post notification bell so when I post a video, you won't miss these videos, okay? So, I love you, fam. And I will see you later.